Hey everybody, this is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner, and today I'm going to review the Mini DSP U-Mic X. This guy. Now, what is this product and how to use it? Well, this product is a microphone with four individual little electets at each of the corners, and it allows you to take an instantaneous average measurement of a spatial area as opposed to doing something like this waving the microphone around in the headspace from the seated position or behind the seated position the benefit of this naturally is that one it takes less time um, two it probably is a little bit more accurate than using the standard moving microphone measurement and three like number one it is less time consuming when you're trying to measure not just one space but a whole area of spaces for example, if I wanted to measure my front row of my home theater, I would have to measure with the single microphone each of the individual seat position. I would have to average all three of those positions together. And the accuracy of those individual measurements then combined together to one average might result in a little bit lower fidelity. However, if you use the UMic X, you can link up to four of those total and you can get an average response instantaneously of four different seated areas. For example, the three front seats all at one time, plus the rear seat at one time, or however you want to do it. You can use this in car audio. You can use this in home theater. You can use this in your living room. You can use this in a church venue. You can use this in a concert. You can use this pretty much anywhere where you use a standard microphone. And again, the benefit is you are allowed to measure an average response over an area, not just of one particular area at a time, but of up to four particular areas at a time, which is really and truly a game changer up until this moment, when you wanted to take a spatial array of a system response, what you would rely on using is multiple single microphones all mixed into some kind of interface like a Tascam or something like that, a multiplexer of some sort. And then that signal will be routed into software such as Smart Live or SysTune, which I believe both of those even today are in the neighborhood of about $1,000 each. So that's software only. If you wanted to have a full system set up and running to measure a spatial average headspace area, then you're looking at maybe about $100 for each microphone. So let's say you buy eight microphones, that's 800 bucks, and then another thousand or so for the software and then the hardware that you're gonna use. So you're in the neighborhood of 18 to maybe $1,900 to get you eight microphones arrayed and software included. However, if you want to use the UMic X, which comes in a pack of two, each UMic X has four microphones. The four electets are at each corner, thus the X pattern. This averages in real time. You get two of these for $550, and that includes the $100 Pro License Upgrade fee for Room EQ Wizard. So for $550, you have eight microphones and the software ready to go roughly uh, about a quarter to a third of the price of what you would typically pay otherwise. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and get into some of the measurement demonstration. As part of my evaluation, I'm gonna be using the KEF R3 bookshelf speakers in line with the SVS SB3000 subwoofer. Now, I got each of these products on loan for review to test. Hopefully, they'll be coming down the pipeline pretty soon. But in the meantime, this is what I'm gonna use for today's evaluation. So now that you see what we're going to measure, I'm going to actually measure the response using the moving microphone method with a single mic, and then I'm going to measure the response with the UMic X, and then we're going to talk about how you can incorporate multiple UMic Xs to measure multiple seats at one time. What I'm going to start with is the single microphone. I'm putting it in a boom. I'm going to get in the seat behind me. I'm going to wave the microphone around on my headspace. I'm going to capture that response, and then we'll go on to the next thing. Now I'm gonna move on and start measuring with the UMic X after I put all the pieces together. Before I measure, I wanna show you how to set this up. The cable goes into the A port and the B port will be the out port if you're multi-chaining or daisy chaining multiples of these. And make sure that when you're using this, these little holes are the microphone ports. So whatever the sound direction is coming from, that's the direction that you want the microphone to be facing. So I'm gonna set this, uh, this array with it facing forward so the microphone ports are facing where the sound is coming from.
that's it. It's really simple. You don't have to wave a microphone around or anything like that. You just set the microphone up in the direction that you need it to be facing. And there's a hair flying around my face. Next up is we're going to put three in the front row. We're going to measure the response of all three seats at the exact same time and take the average of them at the same time with the U-Mic X arrayed microphone. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a real-time moving microphone measurement from behind that seat or behind this seat. And I'm going to try to sweep the entire front row area and then we'll look at a comparison of that. So the moving mic method done from behind the seat to capture the whole front row is finished. And you can see that, yeah, it's not a lot of effort, but Imagine if you were in like a in a larger room or you're trying to cover more area or like in my case, you know, you want to measure a couple seats in the front row and then maybe a couple seats in the back row. You could use the moving mic measurement method and, you know, get pretty good results or you can use an array microphone method and get pretty good results a lot quicker. How accurate is the U-Mic X versus your typical measurement method, which is using a single microphone and just waving around in the headspace. Well, for one thing, an array microphone is definitely different than a single microphone and a single microphone waved around in the headspace, hold it onto a boom or something like that. I mean, you got placement issues. So if you're talking about absolute apples to apples comparison, you're probably not going to be able to really make that. But what you're going to try to pay attention to is the low frequency and the mid frequency when you're making a comparison like that. And the reason why is because those frequency wavelengths are longer than the actual distance from corner to corner of the U-Mic X. And therefore, theoretically, they shouldn't really be much different, if at all, assuming that your microphone are placed in roughly the same uh, space. However, with that said, I found this note in the U-Mic uh, manual pretty interesting, this portion right here, which I'm going to read out. Note that even with the calibration file, the U-Mic X does not have the same level of accuracy as the U-Mic 1. The polar response is not symmetrical at high frequencies. The benefit of the U-Mic X is its ability to make multiple measurements at the same time. This can also mean that repeated measurements are more accurate as there is no need to move a single microphone to different locations. Okay, so what they're saying here is... The benefit of the U-Mic X is not necessarily in its accuracy compared to a single microphone, but more so in the ability to make repeated results, or repeated measurements, and just um, that's what I'm looking for here. It's just easier in general to use the U-Mic X when trying to get measurements at different seats. So let's look at some of the differences in the measurements that I retained earlier. So the single moving mic method, and notice this top end falling off now. That is in relation to the position of the microphone versus the tweeter axis. Um, it's a little bit off the tweeter axis, so I expect some kind of fall off. It seems a little bit high, so I double checked to make sure the cal file that I was using was the zero degree file, and it is. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of interested by that. So I'll have to make sure that when I actually do my demos, that I'm making sure that my ears are at the right level, and then I'll probably remeasure that again but for the purposes of what we're doing today that's not necessarily a big deal then we're going to look at the U-Mic X in green and you can see that the U-Mic X is a lot more flat further out and again I think that has something to do with the actual positioning relative to the tweeter axis um, however if you also take note about what they said about the accuracy of the U-Mic X there's probably a little bit of a double up there so going back to what I mentioned previously the low frequency and the mid-band frequency, you can see the low, low frequencies are pretty much right on top of each other. When you get into the mid-band, there's some differences here, and I attribute that to placement. I mean, the, the chair itself that I was measuring in is pretty reflective, and I've actually had a hard time getting the exact same response measurements, even when using the moving microphone measurement method, because just placing it a little bit down or up away from the back of the seat can drive this area pretty significantly. So overall, 
the single microphone versus the single U mic X, I think is relatively, you know, okay, I guess. Now we're going to look at the main purpose of the U mic X, which is taking measurements over different seats and getting an arrayed response for each of those seats at the same time. Now this is the moving microphone method across the entire front row. So when I was waving it in each individual seat in a circle pattern and then moving the microphone across from one seat to the next. And then this is the three individual U mic X's at the seated position. And you can see again, they, they line up pretty well except for the high frequency response. But overall, I think that the, uh, the U mic X is, is doing a good job in regards to what it's supposed to do. So that's the data. Now let's jump back into the conclusion and finish this video out. I forgot to mention earlier that the U-Mic X, each of them, comes with its own telescoping boom, and then it comes with a little screw adapter headpiece that you can attach the U-Mic X to, and makes life a little bit easier when you talk about placement, which you'll see here. The hardware also comes with the little box that basically controls all the DA and, and has an optical input as well as an optical output if you want to send signal from it, which makes life easier again. And then here's the main input, and then it's got the USB connection for your laptop that will allow programs such as REW to see it. And then it's got the power connection. One thing I'm going to note about the power connection, I initially made the mistake of connecting both of these USBs to my computer, thinking that the USB power connection would be able to draw enough power from my laptop. That was not the case. I was noticing very intermittent uh, capturing and things just, it just didn't look right. And then when I actually moved the power brick to the wall via this power brick that they give you, a little power brick adapter for the USB cable, uh, everything worked fine. So I reached out to Mini DSP just to verify that my results were accurate. And they said, yes, you do need to power it via a wall outlet. So just for those of you who may think the same as I did, don't connect it to the laptop. Um, you, you may get it to work, I seriously doubt it connect it to a wall adapter. The only negative that I've experienced thus far with the U-Mic X is simply it's quite fragile. If you notice, this is pretty much all printed onto a board, ready to go, and I made the egregious mistake of bumping into the counter that I had one of these propped up on. It fell about three or four feet off that counter and landed and it cracked the side and just split it right in two. So I went from having four to three and that sucked. So. If you're buying these, be very careful. Don't do what I did. Don't do a boneheaded move and just set it out somewhere to be knocked over by a kid or your dumb self later. Make sure that you take care of it, put it up somewhere. Uh, it might even be kind of neat if somebody wanted to take the time and make like a good frame around this with some PVC or something and then attach it to that frame. Uh, just make sure that you don't block the microphones themselves. But if you wanted to do that, that may be a neat little investment. Uh, make your own little shroud or case, something like that. I think it's more suited for not necessarily the car audio person um, and not necessarily the single seat listener but i think that if you're going to be the kind of person who's going to be measuring a lot and you're going to be measuring in a lot of different places and you want repeatability and you want um, to save yourself some time and some headaches you know if you're measuring over long distances between seats then the u mic x is perfect for you if you're not if you're going to be you know measuring just every once in a blue moon you know, then it's probably not worth the money or the effort for you to upgrade to the U mic X. And again, if you're the kind of person who was already looking at something like Smart Live or SysTune or any other number of ways to take um, an arrayed microphone measurement from multiple seats or even the same seat, then this is almost a no brainer. I can't think of any reason why you would want to spend a thousand dollars on those softwares. And is that a word softwares? and also the numerous mics that you're going to have to get. Imagine if you had to purchase 16 microphones. That's $1,600 in microphones themselves, as opposed to, you know, buying two of these kits will get you four total mic arrays with 16 microphone electets combined for about a thousand bucks. Just something to consider. And with that said, I'm out. I hope you guys appreciate it. This is kind of a hodgepodge of a video. And to be honest with you, it was a lot more effort to put together than I thought. Watching back, I'm sure people are going to wonder why. I don't know how to explain it, but man, this was this was kind of tough to put everything together and wait and, and all that. But uh, anyway, 
Make sure you subscribe, you like. If you have comments, please comment away, ask questions. Well, that's it for me. I'm out. You guys take care. Peace.